Vietnam by motorbike, a journey that has no structure apart from reaching the capital of Vietnam in three weeks time and hopefully in one piece. We're currently 400 kilometers into our 2,800 kilometer south to north tour through this incredible country, embracing the raw beauty of staying off the beaten path and immersing ourselves in the Vietnamese culture. In this episode, we will continue doing just that, riding through rural Vietnam, stopping off at some eye-opening places and having our first run in with the police. All while showing what people are missing out on by sticking to the conventional tourist route through Vietnam. Please remember to subscribe if you enjoyed the video and give us a like and a comment. We really love responding to you guys. This also helps push the video out to more like-minded people and help us grow. Good morning, everyone. We've woken up. This room is a sweat box. This is like fully shining down on us right now. And we're basically ready to go until we forgot that we needed to just say where we wanted to, where we're heading today so it'd be just fun to try and get into the habit of doing that every morning so the first day we started in Ho Chi Minh City here we followed the highway oh this pen's really good we followed the highway up past this lake then we went inland a little bit until Cat Tien National Park what we did yesterday was do a bit of a inwards loop here to bow lock back up inwards round and this is where we are now just outside of gear gear something like that and what we plan on doing today instead of going on this big highway is there's a like an inland road that goes through two national parks up here join on the highway and then to Bwamafot which I'm definitely saying wrong because every time I say it to someone, they have no clue where I'm on about going. But this is going to take us just short of four hours-ish. We've probably a stop a couple of times for food and petrol and stuff like that. So yeah, that, that's the run through that we're doing today. So that's 142 kilometers worth of riding. It says it on Google Maps it's going to take three hours and 34, so a bit shorter than yesterday. Hopefully a bit less sore on the arse today. Okay. After a quick goodbye to the lovely homestay owner, it was time to tackle the moss-covered driveway that had thankfully been drying up in the sunlight. Thank you. Bye-bye. No, there's for no reason. I know. It's when you think about stuff for too long, isn't it? Yeah. But it was dead easy, that was. Cool. Let's go. Staying away from the main highway to reach our next destination was proven to be a great choice. No less than 10 minutes up the road, the scenery completely opened up, revealing rolling hills covered in farmland. This was actually the first time Mitchell even allowed me to operate the drone, never mind while on the back of the bike, so this was a pretty terrifying experience for me, even though the surroundings were outstanding. even managed to take Mitch's horn virginity after he vowed never to use it on this trip. Oh, he used his horn. We could get comfortable riding like this the whole way through the trip, but we knew at some point the inevitable highway riding would be back. For now, it was time to sit back and soak it all in. We keep seeing at the side of people's houses loads of, like, black beans and I don't know what it is they've got loads it looks too dark for it to be coffee yeah it looks too dark for it to be coffee like part of me thinks like it looks like pepper should we take a bag of it for the van yeah if it is coffee oh my gosh maybe we'll have to have a quick google about what that is because every house seems to have it and they all use their own um like driveway is their like drying station for it. And there's a lot of plants about. This is so cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So after translating, we've just got on the Wi-Fi. I think we're having beef pho. Um, that translates to beef hot pot. So I think that's what we're having. And then we've just figured out that what they were pointing out, what we pointed out, not knowing what it was, mm. is the actual size of the bowl. So we've gone for big. Mm. We just went for big because the people who are eating next to us kind of helped us out. We've not had anything for breakfast yet and it's 11 o'clock now, so we're pretty hungry. It looks bloody stunning. This looks really good. It's so hot. I'm ready for this. It looks well nice. And it's going to be 30,000. That's like a pound. It's honestly ridiculous. So we're just finishing up our meal, which is probably one of the best fur we've had since we've been away. And I just thought I'd show you what it's like. So this is someone's house. This is where they're living. They've got loads of chickens. Literally got their laundry. And then right down the bottom here is a toilet. I just thought I'd show you what the typical toilets are like here. So this is like their house and their toilet. So you've got a sink out the front and then just a classic squat toilet. It's a big fly in here. But yeah, so when we stay in it and get food at places like this, where it's at the side of the road, very local, this is usually the toilet situation. We only seem to get a toilet, a proper toilet, when we're checking into rooms. Otherwise, we're just using the locals. After chomping down on the best meal of the trip so far, it was back to the ever-changing scenery of this journey. Although the surroundings were something you could constantly gaze at, you couldn't take your eyes off the road for very long. The only way I could describe the roads in Vietnam is like a hazard perception test, but on steroids. concentration needed to navigate these roads meant having a lot of coffee breaks. Oh my ass is sore. That last like 45 minutes has been flogging the bike on my ass. I'm probably your ass as well. Yeah. Very, very bouncy, very potholy. But uh, it's been fun. We're just gonna be paying for it later. Yeah, that was that was pretty rough. Like my ass just really hurts. Yeah. Um, and just a lot more bouncing. Whereas yesterday it was a lot smoother. Whereas today when your ass hurts and then you're bouncing on it, it's like <laughs> it's like being on a pogo stick, wasn't it? Yeah. But we've come to a, we were struggling to find a coffee shop of anything, weren't we? Yeah. We we're trying to look, but this this looks okay. Um, just hoping to get a coffee. I was gonna ask for a, a back seal, which is like more, I think it's a mix of different milks, like normal milk or UHT, and then condensed milk and coffee. But they have a sign that says cafe, like C-A-P-H-E, meaning like coffee. So we just kind of went with that, didn't we? Yeah. We don't know what we're getting. Probably the same as what we had earlier. As long as it's got coffee in it, I don't mind. Yeah. Coffee and a bit of sugar is all that we need. Oh, thank you. We'll be green tea again. Thank you. Thank you. This looks good. So I've ended up ordering an iced one this time. Don't know how, but I'm actually very happy about it. Is it going on behind me? Yeah, a little bit. In older days, it just came over and started speaking loads of Vietnamese to me. And I was trying to say, like, I don't understand what you're trying to say. And the, the girls were obviously saying, like, they don't understand, they don't understand. And he just kept on talking and smiling. And then one of the other girls had just pulled him away because they were getting embarrassed. <laughs> He's over there. <laughs> Don't think you can see. <laughs> so hard, isn't it? Yeah, I wish I could talk to him, but there's absolutely no chance. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, look at his I've never asked me photos if you've taken before. <laughs> 
<cười> Ôi người mình sao nhỏ thế I can't stop smiling now They just had like a full on photo shoot with the whole family That's so sweet I grabbed one photo But then we kind of went round and round and, and got it on different people's phones Different family were getting in for different photos Like the girls and we went up on one of the girls' Instagram Mitch had a lip filter on it <laughs> With red lips <laughs> But yeah, so funny Because we no one speaks any English So it's just yeah, they were just all having a having photos, and we were saying like, how many times when people do this route and stop here? It, it, yeah, specifically here, like two white people coming through, it just probably doesn't happen. Like once in a blue moon, maybe once month, once or twice a year, maybe to come to this exact spot. So yeah, we must be a um, a rarity. <laughs> so it's it's fun. My face just hurts from smiling all the time. <laughs> I must say, these moments of us doing these little stops are probably my favourite bit of the trip so far. Hello, oh, well, buggies. Hello, Anna. Hey, Bye bye. Hello. Nice to meet you. Bye bye. Hello? <laughs> yeah. going on here this is like the first bit of traffic that we've hit like this whole time since coming out of Ho Chi Minh but I don't know what it is it looks like they're carrying something there seems to be a lot of preparation for Tet here which is like their celebration for New Year we're seeing a lot of celebration like preparation for that celebration at the moment so this might be something to do with that no one's overtaking it though. Huh? No one's overtaking it though, so I don't know if it's like a religious thing or like I don't know what's going on. Could it be a funeral? It might be a funeral, yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's weird for none of the bikes to be overtaken. Respectful, but then a few bikes are going past, so I thought I'd go with them. Yeah, I think some were part of the. the I was meant to say funeral procession here before receiving a face full of dust. Anyway, a short ride later, we started to enter Boon Ma Top, a city we didn't expect to be much bigger than where we spent the previous night. It then proved to be one of the most stressful stretches of this trip. Everyone seemed to be rushing from one place to another and the roads were just a free for all. Just take a look at this roundabout. Because of the chaos, I turned off the camera to let Mitchell concentrate and to get us to our accommodation in one piece. So how did you find that? Oh, my ass is sore. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't too bad. It was more just here. Like, it felt like everyone was trying to get somewhere in a hurry. And that was a, like one of them prime examples where if it was better to be one of the faster people on the road. 
Mm. Like, you know, when that guy, basically a guy who um, tried to like nip past us, but it was a situation where I needed to go round the car and he clipped our mirror because he was trying to come round us. And I turned everywhere that I ride to try and ride like a little bit faster pace than 90% of people on the roads because it just stops them situations from happening. It does, it sounds stupid, but going a little bit faster sometimes just feels a bit safer because it stops people like going round you and like causing problems for you. So we, I don't think we got it on camera, but yeah, yeah. That, that city like coming into here was just a lot more roundabouts and corners and stuff. So when the roundabouts and stuff here, there's no direction. Like everyone just sort of like makes their they way across they it. Shouldn't be, they shouldn't have them. Yeah, people there's no point in having the roundabouts because people just, wh whichever lane, go left, right, straight forward. So every time you hit a roundabout, everyone's just darting round trying to go for it. So it's just, you, you have to have eyes in the back of your head because you're trying to go left and someone's trying to come past you. It's like, it's really, really difficult. But we got here safe. It's okay. We've come into the supermarket because we were always intrigued on like what's in the supermarket in new places. We got like weird things like corn sweets and stuff. Some flavour gels. Weird. I might try a few things. We're also super thirsty, so that's why I think everything else is looking really good right now because we're like hungry, but th it's because we're thirsty. Oh, mango. Yeah, I love a new supermarket. They look cool. Caramel ones. We've just picked up a little selection of the random sweets that were in that shop because they all look really fun. And we've decided that we're gonna just watch a film tonight. It looks like it's gonna chuck it down. I don't think the camera's really picking it up, but it's gone really dark. And rain has been forecasted. And to, to be honest with you, we're both feeling absolutely knackered. M Mitch, more than me, I don't have really a reason to be tired. I've just sat on the back of the bike. But he's obviously been driving a lot. So I think what we're going to do is go back to the room, chill out, watch a film, eat these sweets, and then probably like, run out for a band me later on. We're now leaving Bournemouth this morning. It's a lovely sunny day today. So we're trying to make the race of it and just get out whilst it's nice and hopefully avoid any rain that might be coming our way. But first off, we need to get out of here. Also, if you want to see a bit more of an inside look into what our day-to-day -day looks like, I've been putting a few stories up on Instagram and they'll be saved in our Vietnam highlights as well as Thailand. So if you don't follow us on Instagram, Make sure to go give us a follow and I just put little posts up so when we're not filming the boring stuff for you guys I kind of take a little snap so check it out if you want to see more. Leaving the city actually turned out to be fairly straightforward. We must have just caught the rush hour traffic yesterday afternoon. Unfortunately, today's ride would be a lot less scenic. The ride from here to Plaikou would consist of three hours of straight highway. The only saving grace being that the sun had come out for us. But another downside to being on a busier stretch of road is that it meant for our first run-in with the Vietnamese Popo. Oh, Trying to get them past them lorries fast because I didn't want to be in the inside of them for too long. 
Well, I was still going to speed limit. Yeah. passing another gang of police who were more interested in catching some rays than stopping us. It was time to see what was on the menu for lunch. So we've stopped for some early-ish lunch. Mitch has been seeing bun um, on the menus of places and we don't really know what it means. <laughs> come on. So we've just come somewhere and then they've got all their meat out on the um, in like a little in like canteen service so I basically just picked some random stuff it was a little bit different to what we've had before I didn't know how much to choose or not so. do, you know what, do you know what clicked to me what? you know after them police stopped us I think the reason that they like didn't say anything is because you had that running uh. it clicked to me after because it was such a weird encounter, wasn't it? Yeah. And like you knew that they were pulling us over for, like for something, like you could see they had intention. They both looked at your camera and then just said, slow down. Uh... Okay, so I've come to the toilet at where we've just stopped for food. And I just want to show you again what it's like going to the toilet here. Kind of breaks my heart a little bit. Um, but the toilet is in here. It's like a little brick building. There's a toilet there. I don't know if that's the shower or not. Maybe that's the shower as well. Yeah. This is what it's like. Yeah. There's two crazy ass dogs here. This is crazy. I don't want to film anymore. Another hour down the monotonous highway, we needed another coffee break for our sanity. For the previous 10 minutes, I was singing Woody's Roundup on repeat. Yeah, we watched Toy Story 2 last night. And then for the five minutes after that, I was trying to match the tone of the bike engine with my throat going, mm -hmm. So that's how today's going. <laughs> During this break though, we discovered that we could spend the night in a beautiful hotel in Plaiku for just 10 pounds. And to our delight, Google Maps had decided to take us off the highway and send us down a very rural section of the road. What I loved about this road in particular was being able to drive past all the little houses catching a small glimpse into everyone's day. It's interesting to see people not living a traditional western 9 to 5 life like we're used to and just how happy they are in whatever position that may be. Before we knew it this short section was over and we'd arrived at our flash hotel. Oh, we are way too dirty to be in this room. As you can see it's very nice. I'm a bit in shock. I can't, I can't believe we're getting this place ten pound. Yeah. For one night. This is so nice. This is but this is so nice and we got here just in time as it looked like it was about to start raining. But I'm so happy. I'm so happy that we changed the bookings and came to this. Ten pounds, five pounds each. I can't even try the bed out because I don't want to get it dirty. Yeah. We're absolutely covered in dust. Oh, it's not hard. It's a soft bed. Yeah, so covered in dust today. I just feel gross. I've not washed my hair in a few days because there has literally been no, there's been no need to wash my hair at all because of putting the helmet on. So I think we're gonna freshen up and then go explore. What we're walking down now is like a spit of land that runs straight down the middle of the lake and 
This is called Bienho Plaiku, which I believe translates to Sea Lake, but I think they also call it the Eye of Plaiku because it's basically just a massive lake, a massive freshwater lake that they get a lot of their drinking freshwater from. It's absolutely massive and it's just completely still. It's supposedly, it's, it's crystal clear as well, but we're not being able to see that really now because, because of the sunlight. We're also 800 meters above sea level here, which, yeah, I didn't realize. That's quite high up that is, which explains why it is a bit more nippy here. Yeah. I mean, I'm walking around in shorts and t-shirt and still warm enough, but yeah, definitely cooler than down near the beach. This is actually a um, religious section of it. So there's a, a Buddha there and you're not meant to be wearing uh, you're not meant to have your legs out or your shoulders because it's a religious area but some other people are we didn't know before we came in shorts the next morning we woke up to some miserable weather luckily we only had an hour of riding today to reach a hotel that we had planned to stop at for the next couple of days to catch up on some work this is where we'll pick up from our, in our next episode, well rested and ready to continue our push up north. The next part of our series will show a day we had zero expectation from and turned out to be our favourite of the entire trip. Thank you so much for watching, please remember to subscribe if you enjoyed the video and hopefully we'll see you in the next one.